Welcome to 30 Minutes of Hell podcast on the Field of 68 Network with my man, Clint Sternal, joining us for the first time. Yes, that's right. A dude with the pigskin is going to join us here on a basketball podcast. Stern? It's all leather, Pat. It's all leather, baby. It's, it's all, all leather. Soft <laughs> leather. That's right. Just as it's long as you get. That. It's all about that touch and that flick of the wrist. You know what I mean? It ain't no as long as you Let's got talk. hands big enough to handle that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, man. Here's, here's to leather and little hands, baby. Here's to leather and little hands. You know what I mean? Coach, coach, you must have, you must have a, a, a big time difference down there uh, in Houston. You talking about that Central Standard Time? No, baby. It's just, how we're, it's, just, it's just how we're living down here, baby. It's just how we're living down here, you know? <laughs> you know how I do it. Ooh, come on, baby. Straight black. Straight black coffee. That's that black coffee. Get in your mind, Where right? You get your heart rate you're up in, a bit. You're in Houston, right? Yeah, I'm in Houston, Baytown, actually, where, I, where you know where the roots are, baby, where the roots are. Come on. I survived Baytown one weekend. You did. You got to come back down and see us, man. We got got a pad on the water, man. We got uh, we got a, a we got a little little guest little guest crib out back for you, man. We will let you sleep as late as you want to, nah. man. You hey, you can sit out there. I'm you sleeping snore, on your you, couch. Hey, you can snore. You can fart. You can do whatever you want to <laughs> out there, boss. <laughs> I want to be on your couch. So when you wait, you gotta walk through and see my face, right? <laughs> hey, here's the deal, man. It ain't like them old days. It ain't patent leather, baby. It ain't patent leather. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more comfortable than them old days. Me and you used to run the streets and pass out on each other's couch. A little different days, man. <laughs> We're going to get to that because you had some big life things happening. Getting married, yeah, expecting yep. a baby. Um, yep. we'll go, I want to get into all that. But first, let's jump into uh, this Razorback football season. The Sam Pittman, from when he took over, um, he, he is, he's been able to set goals and reach those goals. So just overall, did you expect them to get to where in this current ranking, they're number 22? Uh, did you expect them to be able to get to where they are so quickly? Oh, no, no, no. no. Anybody that tells you they did, they're lying to you. Look, I mean, I, I think Arkansas, Arkansas is a, I've said this from the jump, Arkansas is, is an eight-win football team, Pat. I mean, that's where the University of Arkansas needs to live. That's where the fan base should expect to be. You get the right guys come along. You get the right coordinators come along. Maybe you make a run. You get 10. You get 11. You get to the SEC championship on a good year. I, I, I expected whoever the coach was, whether it was Brett Bielema or, or Chad Morris or, or Sam Pittman, I don't care who it was. I, my expectation was you get to where you're winning eight ball games a year and the, and the program's healthy, the program's in a stable, stable, uh, stable state, and, uh, you know, the fan base should be happy. And I never in my right mind thought that with this schedule, Sam Pittman, Arkansas Razorbacks over the last two years have had the most difficult two-year two, two year run of schedules that we've ever seen. I mean, it was unbelievably difficult for Arkansas the last two years. And to think that he went from three wins last year to eight wins this year, they're going to be in a bowl game. They're, they're going to be in – I mean, they finished in the top half of the SEC – um, and they're going to be in a big time January one bowl game, Pat. I mean, I, it's just this yeah. is I never would have thought it, brother. Never would have thought so, it, man. But but tip the cap to him. He's done a hell of a job. Yeah, and it was the, the wins that they had in in that SEC West. Actually, uh, other than that Georgia game, which Georgia has been doing that to everybody, they yeah. they they were competing every game. Pat, they had there was the only game that I'm disappointed in, and I think I think if you sat Sam Pittman down and had a serious Honest heart to heart conversation with you. He tell you the same. The only game I was disappointed in in a twelve game run for the Arkansas Razorbacks was the Auburn game. They should have mm. won that football game. Yeah. You can look at you can look at that game and say they lost that football game, right? The other team didn't beat them. They lost that football game. They had a couple of calls didn't go their way. The quarterback held the ball too long in the end zone. It caused a strip. Uh, ended up being a touchdown. Uh, I mean they. they that's the one you want back. But other than that, Arkansas showed up every Saturday afternoon, and, and it was it's a good feeling, good place to be in. So here's my observation going into this season. I didn't realize how good Traylon Burks was. Like, dude is – if he is not the best wide receiver slash playmaker in the country, 
I know I need to watch more college football, but I need somebody to explain to me who is because not only has did he make catches, even Clint, even when he makes a catch that they say he was out of bounds, it's still the most <laughs> yeah. spectacular catch I've ever seen. And he's That's done right. it. And, and coming out of the backfield, the way they used him, I didn't realize he was going to have that explosive year. KJ Jefferson, I didn't know he could. I, first of all, he, he he's room for improvement, but that man was throwing some passes on time, on target. We know how big he is to be able to get some tough yards. So from what the expectation may be for him, and I do, th- I thought in, uh, going into the season, it was going to come down to, and it really always has, your quarterback, right? You're going to, unless I guess if you're Bama, right, with that big offensive line, but if your quarterback can't make you plays, and if you don't have a another playmaker in the offense to make some spectacular plays, yeah. then you're probably not going to be able to have a very successful season. Am I reading That's that fair. right, or did, was it, you want to add more to it? No, look, I mean, I think you're spot on. I, I think I think the one part you're leaving out is Kendall Browse. I think Kendall Browse mm-hmm. is, a, is a great offensive mind. If, if the polo on the sideline can be an advantage, they're going to make mistakes. Every game's not going to be perfect. Every game plan's not going to be flawless. But if the polo on the sideline can come in with a great plan <laughs> or when he comes in with a bad plan can make the right adjustments, then, then you're in a really good place. Now, if he can also put unique skill sets, which, Pat, you understand this in basketball. Basketball, you see it all the time. If, if you put a, a kid, a quarterback, in this case, K.J. Jefferson, has a unique skill set, if you consistently put him in position to have success and win ball games and, and have a 25-3 to three interception to touchdown ratio, whatever the hell it ended up being, then, then you're doing an unbelievable job as an offensive coordinator. If you've got a guy like Traylon Burks, who, by the way, I think he's the best receiver in the country, uh, all things considered, I think he's the best receiver in the country. Um, he, he doesn't he doesn't win with some kind of elite speed that all of a sudden is going to disappear because everybody in the NFL is fast. He, he's right. not a guy that he's not a guy that wins with elite size because when he gets to the league, all the DBs are going to be bigger. He's a guy that wins in a DeAndre Hopkins kind of fashion, and I think that is. I think if anything is foolproof in terms of transitioning from college to the NFL, I think it's that style of play. We'll see what happens. But Kendall Browse, again, playing to K.J. Jefferson's strengths and at the same time getting the best player on the football field touches in Traylon Burks has been an absolute beautiful thing to watch. And so I think when you got those three things, you got a big-time playmaker, you got a quarterback that's that plays within the system and does a hell of a job and is a great fit, and you got a play caller that that – that forms his system around that particular unique skill set at quarterback. I think you got to win in formula, and that's what Arkansas is doing offensively. How good does the defense have to be to well to, to win in a, to win a championship? Right, I guess that's what we're talking about ultimately. Yeah, look, I mean, they they you got to be really good. I mean, it, but but more importantly, I think in today's game, you've got to be complementary, and that's that's the thing that we saw Arkansas do this year is is when the offense bogged down that. The defense was able to keep them in the game, so they had a chance in the fourth quarter. When the defense struggled like they like they did against Ole Miss, like they did against Alabama, the offense was able to 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 score points and keep them in the game. And it get to the fourth quarter, and if it's a one possession game, you got a shot. And and that they played really good complimentary football. I'll even add the Cam Little kid, who obviously had a hell of a year as a freshman in the third in, in the third phase of the game, Pat. I mean, he's a guy, you know, in the second quarter, he's kicking field goals and everybody's going, how come Sam Pittman ain't going for it? In the third mm-hmm. quarter, he's kicking field goals. How come Sam Pittman ain't going for it on fourth down? Well, comes down to the end of the game, you end up winning by four points and field goals are pretty damn important. So they, they, they did a great job of, of playing complimentary football all the way around this year. And, and you saw, you, you, you see the results, uh, uh, an eight win season when nobody expected it. Again, my observation, I hadn't been, you know, I've been around the round ball a lot, a lot more than, than the pigskin, but. People forget, and it's amazing, and it's just how we've grown and how we watch sports, particularly football. The special teams, that is an offensive – kicking field goal is an offensive play. It's part of the offensive system. It shouldn't always be looked at as, well, we have to kick a field – like, dude, that is – for years been part of like how you win football games. And now just because of all the, you know, t- the, the way the offenses are run and the high score and people look at it as I ah, field goals, but it's, 
still a part of what you do. Pat, it's it's analytics. I mean, it, it's the same thing as the three ball in basketball. I mean, you got teams that go out there and go, okay, we're gonna. If we, it don't matter who we got. If, if we shoot 53 pointers, we're going to make X percentage of them and we're going to score X number of points and we're going to play the analytics to a fault. In football right now, it's said the same thing on going forward on fourth down, right? Teams now play third down so that they get in a, an analytical uh, advantage on fourth down in order to go for it, right? And that's right. the trend. That's the trendy thing to do right now. <laughs> And and you see, coach, which I doing, which I like that, by the way. Yeah, you, I, I like it too, Pat. But when you you got to have a gut. This is what I love about Sam Pittman is Pittman straddles the bench. You look at like like you look at Kiffin at Ole Miss. Kiffin's got a dude that an anal, an analytics dude that carries around a book, and that dude flips to okay, it's fourth and whatever at this point in the field, and all these different numbers go into it. And he goes, okay, coach, go for it. And the coach goes, okay, I'm going to go for it. And right. you look at the Alabama game, they turned it over on downs four, I think four times in the first half against Alabama. You can't win that way. You can't right. beat Alabama that way. Right. So right. in my opinion, analytics went too far in that particular situation. But when you look at what Sam Pittman's done, Pat, he, he lives and dies by analytics in some situations, but we've also had two or three games this year where he said, yeah, Everybody booed that Cam Little running on the field. He said, but I just had a gut feeling, man, we needed him three points. If you can if you can juggle analytics and your gut, yeah, I think that's the best way to view this thing moving forward in football. Yeah, yeah. It 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 is. And sometimes it's it is about getting knowing your person, but that's where studying tendencies comes there in. You go. That that and that's what is you can have all the numbers in the world, but the numbers don't under take in the whether you're talking about basketball, drawing up a plate, shooting three, well, guess what? It may be that particular day that this guy just ain't got it. Yep. So your percentage that is here drops to here because he's just so – the tendencies or the tendency of that defense, which goes to against Bama, that fourth down analytics goes way down. Then versus <laughs> that's right. Mizzou, that's right. uh, Mizzou or whoever. Yeah, um, that's the thing that Pat, that's the thing that people don't when we talk about analytics, right? That's the thing that sorry about that. We got old crop dusting coming over out here. But that, that's <laughs> that's the thing that that's the thing that people don't talk about, right? Is like if you're a coach that doesn't commit wholeheartedly to every fourth down situation, you don't commit to analytics right. every down of every season, then you might as well throw the numbers out the window. Right. You can't pick and choose when you want to do it. You can't you can't shoot half the number of threes that analytics says you should shoot. And then in the post game, after you get your ass whooped, go, well, you know, analytics said we should have. No, analytics said you should have shot 53s, not 20. Right. <laughs> I mean, you, you can't you can't you can't have it both ways. And so I, I think it's a it's an inexact science. And I think unless you're like Kevin Kelly, we all know Kevin Kelly from PA. If Unless you're Kevin Kelly, Lane Kiffin committed to analytics. I think it's I think it's a little bit of a stretch to go by the book. Yeah, it, it is. That's man, that's that's why we're in the people business. It'll always be a people business. Yeah, that's I, right. I say it all the time and I love statistics. I know you do. We dig into them, they're fun, they're part of our business. I learned not many things, and this isn't the University of Arkansas's fault, right? I have my, my diplomas right over there, actually, in the back. <laughs> But I really the only, back there. it's not their fault that I didn't learn a lot. But one thing I did learn in a class was there are lies, there are damn lies, and then there are statistics. There because you, you look at a set of numbers and make those things mean whatever the hell you want them to. Okay? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can make hey, those numbers. Hey, so, what, what did Jay, what Jay Z say? Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Isn't that what he said? <laughs> Something like that? Yeah. <laughs> On, but you can't. So the thing is, like video, it, it, it's funny, man. You gotta be in that. That's the value of having been in situations before, experiences, game minutes. Because even video, people say, "Oh, tape don't lie." True. However, tape don't show. I mean, you got to watch everything, and you gotta sometimes be in that situation to know what the player sees. Like, yeah. you can watch mm -hmm. tape, but you don't realize you could probably give a two hour discussion on how you and Anthony Lucas, it probably didn't show up on the tape. You two just looked at each other quick because Anthony noticed maybe how the foot of the defender was or, or, or certain things. 
That's experience. That's understanding yeah. tendencies. Tate didn't show it. Statistics didn't show it. You two just had that. Yeah. Together. Yeah. Pat, there, Pat, I'll give you a perfect in the moment example. And, and I, I think I'm on the same, I think I'm on the same train with you here. But you like look at look at everybody ranting raving about KJ Jefferson right now and his and his completion percentage. Seventy five percent over the last few games, nationally in the top two or three guys in the country. And then in the same breath, those same folks want to bitch and complain because Kendall Browse calls a bunch of passes behind the line of scrimmage, yeah. right? They, they, they watch the film and they go, oh, well, look at the middle of the field's wide open. Or, look, they could attack here. Or they could attack there. Or look what he did in the first half. He was three for four and throwing the ball over the middle of the field for 42 yards. Man, call those plays. No, 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 no. No, it, the, the film's lying to you. And if you're not taking into account the quarterback strengths, how he mm. got to 75% completion, how they're getting touches, easy, like, like for sure, like 100%. Right. Like, like th those little quick throws to to uh, to Traylon Burks, those are like runs. Like, I'm guaranteeing he's going to catch this and be able, be able to advance the football in some form or fashion. And that's why the the percentages are what they are, right? Mm -hmm. You can watch the film. We can watch the film through just a, a quarterback's eyes and go, boy, they're playing cover two. We should be able to attack the middle of the field from 10 yards to 18 yards all day long, and I'll be taking candy from a baby. Well, that's not what Arkansas does. Right. So the truth of the matter, if you're watching Arkansas through that lens, then you're dead ass wrong. Like yeah. what your your like your complaints don't even make sense, right? So the film doesn't always tell you exactly the situation. It's about would you say it's about the dudes? It's about the chemistry. It's about the connection with the play caller, the quarterback, and the superstars. It's the same thing in football. Same thing in basketball. There's unique skill sets that are that are that their strengths are attacking defenses a certain kind of way. And you got to take that into account when you're making your decisions throughout a game. And I think they've done that well. So uh, I'm glad you brought up hoops. Gives me a chance to uh, throw on my, my jersey, my jersey. So I was doing a little digging. <laughs> the shooter in this piece. Toy I was doing deuce, a little deuce. digging. <laughs> yes. So, hey, PB, true, true story, man. Growing up. Man, that deuce, deuce, baby. We talk about that deuce, deuce down here in Texas. It's like, hey, man, that's Emmett Smith, baby. What size rims you got on that truck? That's it. That's Emmett Smith right there, baby. Them twenty two. Now, ever since them Arkansas days, since my boy the shooter was wearing deuce, deuce, <laughs> hey, man, that ain't that ain't them Emmett Smiths. That's them shooters, baby. Twenty two. I love shooters. it. <laughs> the shooter right there, baby. I love hey. it. Hey, what size? What size rims you putting on your truck? Shooters? <laughs> 22, <laughs> baby. Come on, man. That's beautiful. And there's no question. I'm a, there's no question. <clears throat> when I came down to Baytown, yeah, yeah. my first crawfish boil, first crawfish boil, no idea how Baytown, Texas, how you guys did it until I went down there that weekend, never was the same. And Crawfish <laughs> <laughs> never was the same. What's the temperature right now? What do you guys got to be wrong? Well, I got I got this half zip on. I'm out here sweating, man. It's got to be knocking on 70. I'd say 65, 70. It's sunny. Ooh. But check this out. You know my 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 uh our hog hoops team. Yeah. Rankings came out top 10, number 10 ranking. Uh okay. some have number nine, but they go by the AP number 10. Hogs football number 22. So I did a little dig. And I did it specifically our years okay? okay so i'm gonna say the last time now if anybody who played wants to do their own research you go ahead your team reached as as high as number nine i think in that 98 season okay. which was your junior year right so i looked that that season we my basketball team <clears throat> in november we got up to 18. <clears throat> so that was the last time we were 18. You guys, I believe, were like 11. The last time we had those two top 20 teams in the country, football, basketball. Yeah. And I, I, I don't know if you got this sense, but I got the sense <clears throat> that the teams feed it off each other. We fed off each other's success, <clears throat> both your success and in our team. 
<laughs> yeah, look, I, look, I, look. Here's the deal. I, 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 there's no question about it. I mean, look, the, the whole reason I went to Arkansas is because you boys were up there balling. I mean, I, I went in there and sat in Bud Walton Arena, and I was like, "Hey, man, if they can get twenty thousand to make this kind of racket, man, we we can get we can get fifty, sixty, seventy to get real loud." So there ain't, there's no doubt. Of, and I only say that I, I know that you and I didn't really arrive until ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, but. I only say that to, to make your, your point is, is, I mean, there's no doubt about it that basketball and football, they, they thrive off of each other. There's no doubt about it that one of them feels the other one's momentum uh, as you roll into a season. There's no doubt about it that when you get, when you got Dave Van Horn up there doing his thing and, and when you got, uh, you know, Musselman up there doing his thing that Sam Pittman goes, hey, <laughs> hey these boys up here, these boys up here winning ball games. I can't come up here half step and I, I got to get right. on this thing, you know? And it's a, it's a it's a I think it's a strong reminder every morning that Sam Pittman gets up when you got when you got mm-hmm. programs around him that are absolutely balling. So uh, yeah, man. Pat, to your point, I I don't think there's any doubt that um, that the the programs feed off of each other. There's no doubt that the support from the fan base, the support from all the boosters, uh, they feed off of of you know one sport bleeding into the other. Um, so yeah, man, look, it, it's a, it's a hell of a time to be, uh, a Razorback right now. If you're a fan, if you're a season ticket holder, you're watching the top 25 football team, you're watching the top 10 ba- basketball team and hell you're watching the top five baseball team. And by the way, if you want to ease down the street, they got one of the best track programs ever in the history of, of college sports. So, um, yeah, there's no doubt we feed off each other. What, what, what's your opinion on the NIL? I know me and you would have got paid. I know that much. <laughs> I know my mom wouldn't have had to buy me that damn bet she bought me in 1999. I know that damn much. <laughs> yeah, no, I love it, man. Look, I, I love it. I, I'm, um, Pat, I, I'm here for it. I, I, think, I think there was a day and age when everything wasn't about money, uh, where athletic directors and, and coaches weren't making, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars. And, and there was a day when, you know, the guys, the people, the, the adults essentially – involved in college football weren't making millions and millions and millions of dollars but that's where we're at today and for the players to not have it, and I don't, I'm not saying that you just they, it becomes a wild wild west like they've done now and you right. just let these kids go out there and become a millionaire the kid at Bryce Young at Alabama became a millionaire before he ever threw a football for, for <laughs> Alabama um, you look at the kid the Quinn U- Ewers kid Ewers kid I don't know how the hell you say his name but he came from the Houston area and he went up to Ohio State and now he's behind C.J. Stroud up there. I believe he's got a, a, a huge chunk of money on the line to stay at Ohio State, and now he's considering transferring, and he doesn't know what – so now these kids are truly professionals. Like, they're locked into a bad situation because of money. And so right. I don't know that that's the answer, Pat, but I know I know what the hell they were doing was not the answer. I know I know what you and I were doing was was not the answer. I know that – I know that in 98, 99, we left. They immediately started expanding the stadium where they could make more money. And we got put out on the streets and, and, and put out to pasture and, 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 and folks forgot about us. And then the next crew came through. So right. um, I, I, I'm here for the NIL, brother. I'm here for it. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. And you can educate kids <clears throat> if done properly for it. Let me well, get this. Hey, Pat, I'm going to tell you that that was you're you're hitting the nail on the head. Like I, my opinion of it was, it, at the very least, the NCAA should create a class, for lack of better terms, right? right? To where where you pay these kids, and and it look if it's a quarterback and he's a million, that's fine. Whatever the hell, I'm gonna the money get a cough is. drop. Yeah, get you a cough drop. Whatever the money is, <laughs> you you give them you give them the money, but it's in a bank account. You teach them how to budget. What are the eye drops or cough drops? Cough drop, you're baby. Dro- Cough drop. I'm hey, good. Yeah. There's you're a little dropping, dry up here. Hey, you're, you always been a dropping <laughs> son of a bitch, boy. I tell you what. Hey, uh, hey. <laughs> I was. I just flew, and it dry, you know, dries you up, man. It dried up all here. I'm good, yeah, though. No you're corona living that high here. Life. No you're corona here. high life. <laughs> just dry in the throat. Hey, hey especially, hey, you know, in the Northeast, it's getting cold. Can, yeah. And, and, and so, you know, everyone blasts the heat. It drives the old shooter up, man. <laughs> Drop the old shooter. Yo, hey, I'm man, good, get though. You look, get, get your little crown royal with some honey, baby. Come on. You know what I'm saying? 
Yeah, that's that big time, that's that big yeah, time look, medicine. medicine. Come on, man. That, my mom was beating that to me at about <laughs> seven years old when the old throat, when the old throat, I started hurting. But look, <laughs> I mean, I, look, I think there was something there, and, and they've obviously gone to the wild, wild west, and I think this thing's going to get out of control. But but there, to me, the right way to do it was to <laughs> was to, to to create some kind of learning experience for these kids. See, I mean, look, when I, I graduated college, Pat, I didn't have I didn't have a, I had a bank account like with an ATM card. That's all I had. I didn't I didn't know Check nothing about checks. I didn't know about <laughs> budgeting. I didn't know about paying bills. I didn't know about being responsible with my money. I, I didn't know any of that. And, and, and right. it would be a it would be a huge advantage if you could teach 100 athletes. Right. That lead, and I'm sure it's more than that. I'm sure it's 250, 215 athletes that graduate every year. If they left with a better understanding of how to balance a checkbook, of how to pay their bills, of how to budget, I mean, you're giving them now at 43 years old, I look back, you're giving them a huge step, right. uh, you know, head start on, on the rest of the world. I mean, it's just because a lot of those kids didn't have dad at home. I didn't, my dad, hell, I didn't. My dad at home wasn't teaching me the X's and O's of, of, the, of finances, right? I mean, so <laughs> that you could create an opportunity for kids like that. I thought that would have been a really good idea. Clearly, they opened this thing up to to the wild, wild west. It's Young Guns. It's the newest episode of Young Guns running around this piece for millions of dollars. But I'm here for it, man. I told I was talking to a few a few of the players. I said, man, years ago we didn't even have to work to get that money. They just gave it to us. I'm just kidding. Just kidding, NCAA. <laughs> no, you ain't. Just no, you ain't. Kidding. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> we didn't get anything. Uh, where do you think the college football expansion is going to go? How long is it going to be? Six, eight, twelve? Oh, how come long on, is it man! Break to twelve. You know what's up, man. I'm part of field of twelve, baby. It's going to go to twelve. Come on, man. You know what's up. Yeah, look, I I, I don't know what it's going to go to, but I, I hope it's twelve for, for the sake of my guys. But I mean, ultimately, here's the deal: is I, I think you got to expand it. Number one. Uh, I, I think there's more money to be made, and 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 you you allow more kids the opportunity to fulfill their dream of winning a national championship. I, I think you can you can uh, reward kids and and teams that win their their conference, right? Regardless of what your record is, you go in, you win. Like I will win the Big Ten this year, I will get in, right? I mean that's that's part of it. Uh, I, I think you can reward a, a the highest ranked group of five football team every year. Right now, it happens to be Cincinnati. U of H is right there on their heels. Um, you got to, you know, in the past it's been Central Florida. In the past it's been uh, 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 Boise State. Um, you know, there, there's, there's, you can reward more teams. I think you can remain extremely competitive, and ultimately, I think it's great for the health of of football. I've always yeah. been, I've always been a, a an eight guy. I've been an eight guy. I, I think you you give the five power five conference champs any way you slice it you give those five those five teams a seat in, in the in the playoffs right your sixth team is your highest ranked group of five football teams so your Cincinnati UCF Boise State whoever that is and then you got two at large bids right and if you're if you're if you're a group of five team uh, right you know right now it's Cincinnati if it's a no-brainer but if your group right. of five team if your group of five team is ranked 22 then okay that turns into an at large bid Right. So so now you got five conference championships. You got three at larges and you right. can really you can really make a, a, a you know, a, a really strong tournament at the end of the year for college football. You go to 12. Now. Now you're really talking. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how you build that. I don't know how you structure it, but I, I'm here for it. I think it's you talk about money. There is bukus of dollars to be made. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you and I as fans. I mean, hell, we get together and I throw me old, throw me old silver bullet party and we watch a little football, baby. <laughs> it it is a no brainer. It's gonna get there. It's just how how they hey. they need to figure out the TV networks. How they're gonna yeah, figure that out? Hey, that hey, money. Hey, if it makes dollars, it makes sense. They'll figure it's, that out, baby. That's exactly right. Uh, we hit up some hogs hoops real quick, Coach Come on, Muscle my boy Must. Let's talk about it. Come on. So what what what's been your impression of him? Just I know you're on social media. He's big on social media. The yeah. team, the rise. What's what's been your impressions of him overall? The team last couple seasons. Well, here here's what I know. Here's what I know in team sports. Right is energy, effort, passion, 
attention to detail, um, all of that wins. Like you take mm-hmm. all the all the winning teams that have won basketball, football, whatever it may be, right? But we we can talk all that. You talk you you talk about all these the different basketball teams that have always won, and yeah, they got some great players, no question about it. But there's a certain level of expectation. There's a certain level of energy and effort and passion. There's and more importantly, from a coaching perspective, talking about must. There's a there's an attention to detail there that mm-hmm. is just that is just relentless, and. I think that, to me, when Musk first came in, I think you sit back and you go, hey, man, is this dude real? Like, he can't keep this. He can't keep this up. There ain't no way. This is just a hoax, man. They're going to win a couple, you know, whatever. Right. And then you, you really follow the dude and you listen to guys like yourself um, and, and you, you watch him on social media. I ran into him at a football game this year. Unbelievable dude. I mean, I mean, never, didn't know me from Adam. Stop, broke good bread, but I could tell there was a sense of urgency. Hey, Clint, I got to get back to Bud Walk. We got work to do. And, <laughs> right. and I, I just I, I think that, that that stuff plays, man. Yeah. And I don't know the X's and O's of hoops like you do, Pat, but but I, I just greatly appreciate the dude's attention to detail from the basketball X's and O's to the shoes he's painting up to the social media to the recruiting to including his family and everything that he does. Right. I, I said I said it from jump, Pat, and you and I are a perfect example of this. It don't matter. It does not matter where you live. It doesn't matter the color of your skin, the the corner of the earth you grew up in. If your grandma raised you or your brother raised you, the one the one thing that plays in in sports, especially college sports, is genuine, sincere personalities. Yeah. That dude is genuine and sincere. He can walk in any house in America, and they're going to relate to him. I'm not saying he's going to get every recruit, but he can walk into every single house, and because he's genuine and sincere, you immediately kick down the walls of, of, of race, of, of records, of history. Mm-hmm. All of that's kicked down, and it, it becomes extremely raw, and I love that about Eric Musselman. And I, I, I just I think it's, it's at this point we know it's real, and I'm here for it. And, and that's, I think you hit on the head <clears throat> because he doesn't try to sugarcoat what he wants from you. He defines your goals. He defines your roles. I mean, he, 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 he writes out the goals that he wants, yeah. but he defines roles for everybody. And I talked to some parents who were, he was in the process of recruiting their kid and he had it laid out. This is how I have it vision. And, and they were able to see that through. So you're right. It's about being full, straight up with everybody, explain exactly this is how it's going to be. He's been that since day one, even with his own players. Like, hey, this is the kind of rotation I want to have. Seven, yep. eight guys. Rest of you, that's just not how we're going to do it. So you better get in this eight-man rotation by, by conference yeah. play. Or, the, or unfortunately, there may be a better school fit for you, just not here. So he is, I mean, he's up front. He lets you know exactly what they're trying to do. Um, but his energy is ridiculous. And I think the timing of him being, you know, his NBA coaching experience coming off of a great run at Nevada, him and, he and Hunter, you're a check. I see them as like two peas in a pod, man. It was just the, 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 the they, they really had a vi- the same vision right. of how to take care of, on the court, off the court. And so you see the result of it now, man. And and I do think just on the basketball side, there's we have gotten fortunate because you got great high school basketball players in the last few years. I'm talking Clint, great high school basketball players. The two on the roster right now, Jalen Williams, Devo Davis, those kids are unique, man. I'm telling you. Jalen Williams, that dude at six foot ten, he's our best passer. OK, he's our smartest defender when you got it. So like <clears throat> I've always said, like when you what separates you like guard play. Yes, it could. It, it's going to bring you deep in the tournament. You have to have great guard play. But when you look at national championship type play teams, you got to have a you got to have a big two. Right. They all got yeah. six, 10, six, 11, seven feet that can block shots, move, play around the rim. That's why I think Jalen Williams 
is the key because he defensively can make up for mistakes. Offensively, he's a great passer. And then you add that into the next couple of years, we got great, great basketball in Arkansas. So that's an advantage. Pat, he, he's an emotional leader as well. I mean, I can mm-hmm. see that. I can see that from watching the game. But what I like about Jalen, what I like about Williams, man, is simple. The dude's got instincts. He does. It, it, it's, I mean, it, it's it's like the dude that that that's about a four six on the football field, um, average size. But you look up, and at the end of the season, he's got seventy five catches for eight hundred yards and eight touchdowns. You're like, how in the hell did that guy do that? <laughs> yeah. Well, because he's got he's got great instincts and. The like a lot of guys, a lot of guys in, in, in basketball, they don't they don't read the shot. They can't read the shot of which way the, the rebound's gonna bounce before right. it happens. Jay Jay got that. I mean, he's already moving in the direction of the rebound and everybody else is standing in place. And so when you talk about just I, again, I don't know the X's and O's of basketball, but when I watch the game, emotional leader and amazing instincts, offensive end and defensive end, amazing instincts. And there's nothing that'll take a player from being slightly above average to being really good more than instincts will. Yeah, you're right. And that, it, it's funny how I was talking to somebody that, unfortunately, those are the things you can't coach somebody that when they get on campus. That's right. Yeah. Oh, you can't. Yeah. Whether you want to believe he was born with it or he developed it at two, three, four, five, six years old, that's fine. That's right. But I know one thing. You can't get them in 18 and teach them those yeah. kind of instincts. Yeah, that, yeah, that just it, – <clears throat> Clint, man, you, can't te- you can't teach any of them that. It's football, baseball, basketball. You, you, can't, you, can't, you can't teach instincts, man. You either got it or you right. don't. You look at, them li- look at them linebackers up at Arkansas. They all leave a lot to be desired for size and speed. But you look at the linebacker play. That's why this defense at Arkansas is able to do what they do. It's why they've been able to have the success when they have had the success. And you look at every single one of them. Right. You got you got Hayden Henry, you got Grant Morgan and you got Bumper Pool. Every one of them wish they were a little bit faster, a little <laughs> bit stronger, a little bit taller. But ultimately trade all those deficiencies in for the instincts that those kids have, which they've had since they were knee high to a grasshopper. And they play right. big time, big time, big time football at the highest level in the SEC. Instincts are as powerful as any skill set an athlete can have. And, and uh, like you said, I think Jalen Williams, I, I think to me, that's the number I, Again, I don't, I don't know the gooseneck and all that job that you do, <laughs> but, but, but I, I know that for me, the number one thing that if I were recruiting basketball players, football players, whatever, if I was recruiting athletes, if you've got great instincts, mm-hmm. hey, you, you're going you're gonna to ease up to the top of my list and then we're going to make sure we make a couple in-home visits. It's funny you said, <clears throat> yeah, you get instinct. I can work with that. I can coach that. That's it. <laughs> Right. It's, yeah. it's it, that's coachable. That's being coachable coachability right there. Yep. Uh, I, I can't tell you how I, I had a, a good, great, great Andy Stoglin, great coach. He just, he would, he would say to me, he goes, can't fix stupid. Just can't. <laughs> and, and I know it's a popular phrase. That's one of my and, favorite. That's one of my favorite sayings of all time. Can't fix stupid. <laughs> and, and, and so I never realized, you know, because you heard it growing up and you just, but yeah. when you become a coach or a trainer or in you, you say the same thing over and over and, no, and they cannot do it. And, and I remember another coach told me, he said, either you can't do it or you won't do it. Either way, we got a problem. That's right. <laughs> <It's a problem. laughs> That's right. Either way, I, you can't play, baby. Either way, you can't play. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, well, man, I appreciate it. You know, I'm going to head. Uh, you know, I got to go get my get my left on my Razorback belt, Chief. <laughs> I got to hit the weight room. You know hey, what I'm well, saying? Everybody out there, y'all think the shooter, y'all think he's bull jiving right now. I've been in the weight room and the shooter walked in with that with that weight belt on right there. Don't don't think he don't put that thing on and get in that squat rack now. Don't, oh, don't think right. he's I'm joking. He ain't he, <laughs> he ain't joking. He rocks that weight weight that weightlifting belt right there in the gym now. That's what I'm I bet, I bet that's a hit up in Beantown. Hey, coach, I can't even bend down and tie my shoes without putting this thing on. Okay. <laughs> this is giving back support. 
for everyday life. <laughs> That's great, man. That's great, Pat. We gotta we gotta do this again sometime, man. Absolutely. Let's do it. Um, couple weeks after the bowl uh, football bowl game, Razorback basketball get going. You yeah. just got married, and you're expecting a little girl, right? Are you you're not gonna. Did you uh? Have you announced a little girl yet? Are you oh, doing? Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah, you okay. ain't letting the cat out the bag. We're all you're all good, baby. Yeah, man. We look. I I got I got married in February, um, and and uh, she was pregnant in July, baby. That's how you do it. You wait till you're 43. You find you a a, a, a young beauty, and and uh, you know you, you go on plant the seed, baby. We we got to we got a brisket in the smoker, if you know hey. what I'm saying. We we got a brisket in the smoker. That was, yeah, hey, Mark, t- touchdown Mark. on the first play. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey, your boy, man. Look, hey, bad. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. I'm sitting there. I, I asked, I, I asked her pops, right? I asked her pops for for his blessing, you know. And he was like, "Yeah, man. Yeah, it's great. Whatever, whatever." He had a little age gap to get beyond. We had a little conversation, and everything went well. Great. She got a great family. And uh, man, before I get up off the couch, dad says, uh, "Well, what about kids? You know, because he know he knows obviously. Hell, I'm 43. Like I ain't they ain't they ain't gonna be they ain't gonna be backstroking forever. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he said. He said, uh, he said, what about kids? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. I didn't wait this long and, and find the right one and all that to, to, to not have kids. I mean, yeah, I want a family, you know. Man, I walked out of that garage and I thought, damn, I, I hope they're still swimming. I hope them go. <laughs> I hope them go. I, I hope they're still. I hope I didn't just lie to pops, man. And so, uh, yeah, man, when, when, mom, when mama walked in with that, with, that, uh, with that pregnancy test, it was like, who? I, I don't even care what it is, baby. Just as long as I, I know the things are working, baby. So yeah, man. Early March, little girl. Um, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I've, I've um, you know, of course, you ain't you you hadn't been there yet, but I just I didn't I didn't know what I would how I'd feel or what I'd expect and what I'd think. And man, I, I am absolutely stoked about it. Uh, couldn't be more excited. And and uh, life is good, man. And little girl, man. Little princess. Ooh, Look come out, on, man. Come Look on. out. <laughs> Look out now. <laughs> oh, geez. I know if you had your choice, you 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 you'd have her running uh running the spread offense by the time she was about two. Come on, mama. Look, mama's mama's tall. She got big hands. She got broad shoulders. Come on, man. I got all the ass and legs you need. We gonna we got a chance, baby. <laughs> <laughs> we got it. We got a chance. Yeah, man. It's gonna. It's I love gonna be it, fun, man. man. <laughs> We're gonna have to next time we do, we gotta get Mama Hog on too. Oh t- wow. Let, let's do it. I tell you what, let's do a, uh, let's do a bowl. Let's do a little bowl podcast. I'm going to put that together. We'll do a little episode of a, of a, of a, a, a bowl pregame leading into yeah. the bowl game. We'll get you and we'll get uh mama hog and we'll get some of our, some of the best, some of the most entertaining folks in Razorback <laughs> history. We'll get them all on the, on the pod, baby. Let's do it, man. Appreciate it, Clint. Have fun. I'll holler at you soon. All right, BB, get that call taken care of. Hey, get that call taken care of, baby. Hey, I'm here. I'm here. We recover. Pop up the lung on the back. Feel good. Knock out a little 10 push up. (laughs) That's good, baby. All All right, right, man. Hey, I love you, brother. Be good. All right, love you, brother. I appreciate it.